My name is Pamela Aurora, and I'm the CEO of Amy. And I have the pleasure of being here with Mark Zane at Park City here at Digital Health Investment Symposium. He is the ACMIO at Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston. And he is also doing some interesting work that's quite progressive uh, with XVR, which we'll be talking about here in a moment. Um, but I did want to ask you, you've been here at the um, symposium here for class. Um, what are your thoughts and um, what are some of the takeaways that you've had at this event? Yeah, well, first, uh, it's a real pleasure being on this. Um, thanks for having me. Uh, class in di the Digital Health Investor Summit is, uh, is a wonderful event. This is actually the second time I've done it. And what I love is that it's... Um, uh, big enough where you are able to meet new people and, and the meetings are also pretty um, high, high yield. So, you know, I get to be uh, leaders like yourself, uh, investors, other clinicians um, across, the, across the, 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 the United States. And we get to kind of learn about kind of what, what's top of mind and what's exciting in the field of kind of digital and innovation. And of course, I would say the big takeaway uh, for this event has been very much on emerging technologies, um, whether it's generative AI, uh, machine learning, and uh, you know I think I've brought to the hopefully brought to the table a little bit of kind of other emerging technologies like extended reality in in healthcare. Yeah, as mentioned at the conference, um, Amy develops it works for adoption and applying standards as well as best practices and our. our our stakeholders are pretty vast. So we have stakeholders that are in the manufacturing and service providers, um, sterilization, as well as within the hospital and clinic walls, the, those that actually maintain the devices, the medical equipment and the technology. Um, as you and I were talking here at the conference, you're doing some interesting things that really might lend themselves to standards. Um, please share with our group some of your side passion, because you have your day job at day Brigham job. and yep. Women's, yep. and certainly that's a large yeah. plate all by yeah. itself. Um, thank you for what you do as far as helping patients. But relative to some of where healthcare is moving toward, um, in your free moments, you're spending time focused in other areas to progress the industry. Please share. Absolutely, absolutely. So. You know, as you mentioned, my, my day job is I'm the Associate Chief Medical Information Officer at Brigham and Women's, where I really focus on digital innovation and emerging technologies. And actually, my night job, which I think you're referring to, really came from a lot of the work that we were doing about two, two and a half years ago um, during my day job. So one of the new things that we took on um, uh, at Brigham for emerging technologies was actually thinking more critically and thoughtfully about how do we as a system approach emerging technologies in a more thoughtful and systematic way. Okay. And um, actually my team, we, we, we were kind of charged with this new new thing. And as we started thinking about how to do it, we looked across kind of um, class and other kind of resources to see what was like kind of a hot emerging technology. And two years ago, XR, extended reality, which is really the umbrella for uh, technologies like virtual reality, augmented reality, the metaverse, was really having like kind of its moment, very kind of similar, but also not to the generative AI moment that's happening right now. Facebook was changing its name to Meta. Um, there were all these reports from groups like McKinsey talking about, you know, the billions to trillions of dollars of potential new revenue across many sectors that, you know, this new metaverse would, would potentially kind of enable. And it turned out that we didn't know anything about this field. So as we started looking, what we saw both within Mass General Brigham, which is a large academic medical center and integrated health system within um, uh, New England, uh, but also across the industry, uh, there was a real signal. There's really some incredible things happening in XR across the whole field of medicine. So for surgery, um, uh, physicians and surgeons are using extended reality technologies to plan surgeries or to view um, scans on top of uh, the body in a one-to-one -one way. It's like a superpower. That's okay. gonna fundamentally change the practice of surgery eventually. And then for fields like um, psychology and psychiatry, um, where mental health is so important, uh, practitioners are utilizing XR 
to enable social social group therapy um, mm-hmm. or distraction therapy. And then, of course, I'm a palliative care, uh, care physician by training. Okay. So uh, there's a wide body of evidence um, to utilize kind of VR as a form of distraction therapy for procedures and also for chronic pain and other sources of pain. So there's just a lot of kind of early but promising and evidence-based kind of use cases for extended reality. And this whole field was just burgeoning. So fast forward to about a year ago, as we started building out this community within Mass General Brigham, I realized that there was this white space for the entire industry where there really wasn't a um, uh, independent uh, nonprofit kind of um, society dedicated to the advancement of extended reality for healthcare. So I created it. I started the American Medical Extended Reality Association or AMXRA. AMXRA.org is the website. And we are a interdisciplinary, interprofessional, nonprofit medical society uh, whose mission is to advance the science and practice of uh, extended reality. We have over 270 members across the globe, primarily. In the United States, our members are physicians, researchers, nurses, psychologists, technologists, entrepreneurs, and really we have three core initiatives. The first is to truly be the professional home for MXR. So to that end, we're building out kind of all the things you would imagine a society would have. A uh, platform to communicate, we're trying to build events. Um, You know, hopefully we continue to acknowledge both um, early stage people who are dedicating their careers to this work but also people who have already dedicated their careers to this work through awards and leadership opportunities for those who are mid-career. The second core initiative we're doing is we're educating people about the field of medical extended reality, whether it's our peers, um, uh, the public, and eventually we hope to be able to help, and this is where I'm so excited to be talking with Amy, um, uh, regulation. Because I think this burgeoning technology is um, really kind of, Um, uh, threads the needle between um, really incredible software, but also there's absolutely a hardware component and the regulations and safety and kind of uh, uh, those pieces uh, are, the standards are still being defined. And what we wanna do with AMXRA is really have a seat at the table. And lastly, the last thing I'll say, our third core initiative is really advancing the science of medical Mm -hmm. extended reality. I've mentioned already that there's been decades of evidence that these interventions have utility. They're successful. They're successful. There's a wide evidence base. Unfortunately, until very recently, um, there wasn't a journal of record for the Mm -hmm. field of medical extended reality. So when uh, researchers in palliative care did a, a study using VR, they would publish in their in their palliative care kind of journals or when the surgeons did their studies, they would do it in their surgery, and appropriately so. I'm really excited to announce that our group, AMXRA, has partnered with Marianne Lieber to create the very first Journal of Medical Extended Reality. Excellent. And that is the first peer-reviewed um, uh, uh, journal for the field and truly a journal of record. So Excellent. that's going to be very exciting. Well, I do think there's a number of areas that Amy can collaborate with this association that you've helped found. Yeah. And i um, very excited for our members to learn more about that. We'll make sure that the website's displayed. And um, in addition to that, any kind of work or articles that you have, uh, we'd love to surface those to the Amy community. Um, where it's of interest to our various stakeholders. But we look forward to working on some standards with you yeah, in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Um, do, before we go, though, can you give one example of where you're currently applying it at Brigham and w- Women's? Yeah, I, because you know, there's a lot of ideas, but um, what do you have in practice today at yeah. Brigham and Women's? So what was fascinating is when we started this kind of diligence, we saw initially 20 plus projects happening across all of Mass General Brigham, which includes Brigham and Women's, Mass General, and our community hospitals and specialty hospitals. You know, they range from um, some of the things I've kind of mentioned. So uh, there are uh, pain doctors who are researching a lot of, there's a lot of research. We're a very large right. research institute. So Boston is a hub for Boston a is a hub. wonderful That's research. Very accurate. So there's a, um, uh, there are uh, researchers who are looking at using VR um, uh, paired with actually s- uh, s- artificial smell to see if that can actually improve the 
um, uh, distraction therapy, particularly for burn surgery, like uh, uh, for, for burn surgery. It's so painful. Yeah, dressing changes, things like that. There's also a group within infectious diseases who's using VR to simulate proper hygiene for clinicians. Our sterilization community would love to hear yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those are just two examples of actually now we found over 50 plus projects happening across MGB, um, primarily in research, early stage. And what we're building is really that community to help help kind of bring it all together. Excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you, Mark, for yeah. being with us. Um, it's a pleasure. And I know we'll be doing more work in the future. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you.